to begin with, can you compare uh, the success of uh, the uptake of biogas plants mm -hmm. versus improved tox stores? Well, I mean, if, even if you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, people are talking about what 1 million, 2 million people mm -hmm. using biogas plants. Mm -hmm. uh, considering that our population is 1.2 billion, mm -hmm. 1 or 2 million is hardly anything. So that way you can't really call it a success. Okay. Uh, MNRE official statistics says that uh, something like 70% of the installed systems are no longer functional. And what is happening is, uh, and this is something which we are seeing increasingly, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, a system may stop working for a variety of reasons. People just abandon it. Okay. They are not going to spend money to repair it. Okay. which means that they don't see the value in repairing it. Is it also difficult to get after sales support? That is another part of it. Mm -hmm. But even uh, then, I mean, uh, getting after sales support is difficult for so many other things like yes. hand pumps and tractors and uh, other uh, uh, technical, like even atta chakkis. Yes, right. But people somehow find a way to get it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as improved bookstores is concerned, um, the program government itself stopped in 2002 mm. and the reason for that was a World Bank uh, analysis which showed that uh, it was not successful anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, in both cases, I think the reasons are more or less similar. Mm -hmm. uh, where both were target driven programs. Mm. So, uh, MNRE would decide that this year so many uh, devices are to be installed and that target sort of trickled down to the block level. Mm -hmm. And at, at the block level there is somebody called block development officer who blocks the development. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was his or, or her job to achieve that uh, target. Uh, he would typically select a village and work with the Gram Sevak or Sarpanj to get the target fulfilled. In many cases, it basically meant just creating a list of people who are supposed, supposedly have got the stoves. Um, in some places, it actually happened. <laughs> I mean, stoves were installed. But at that time, the kind of designs that were there, the kind of stoves that were being promoted, mm -hmm. the life of the stove was not more than one or two years. But subsidy, is something which a household gets only once in its lifetime. Mm. So what happens after that stove is broken? Because this is a target driven program, at that time there were no entrepreneurs, nobody was selling the stoves. So once, even if that lady had liked the stove, once that stove is broken, there was nobody to give her another stove and even if she was to hire somebody to do it, there was no subsidy. So first stove she may have got free of cost but then suddenly this person will ask 500 rupees or something like that mm -hmm. which she couldn't afford. So it was not a failure in the sense of people totally rejecting the improved cook stoves. Mm -hmm. It was more a sort of a systemic failure. Mm -hmm. In the case of biogas, also a target driven program. Mm -hmm. But there the failure according to me was because the system itself is not very user friendly. I mean, uh, if you want to cook your one day's uh, meal, then you need 40 kilograms of dung and 40 liters of water. So you have to somehow source this. Now increasingly farm animals are disappearing. It's no longer affordable to maintain a pair of bullocks uh, just for 15 days of work in the year. People just hire a tractor. So unless you are in the milk business, nobody owns farm animals. Uh, milk business is also becoming more uh, uh, sort of it is scaling up so there are dairies now so you have it is no longer a household level kind of a system uh, so first sourcing the dung becomes a problem for a household secondly sourcing the water is also a problem in many places of the country mm -hmm. and then because it's a cooking system mm -hmm. it is conveniently considered that everything to do with the biogas plant is the woman's okay. job so instead of going out and collecting firewood, which in many cases was the only 
uh, opportunity for the lady to go out of her house mm -hmm. with her friends. Mm -hmm. Instead of that, now she is in the house, but she is doing all this dirty job of mixing dung with uh, water and putting it in, and then dealing with the slurry which comes out. So it added on to uh, her task. Mm -hmm. And then with biogas, there are temperature variations. They, 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 you are never sure that you are going to get exactly the amount of gas that you need. Mm -hmm. So it, it is not really a very user-friendly process, the way it is uh, designed mm. uh, based on cow dung. So uh, that is why I feel the uptake, uh, I mean, that's one reason. Okay. Uh, inherently, ultimately, it boils down to economy. And that is why I was showing the costs. Mm -hmm. You do any comparison in any way, I mean indirect cost, direct cost, people sort of intuitively know that all these devices are very costly mm -hmm. in the long run. The only cheapest option which also happens to be the cleanest and most user friendly option is LPG. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the point really is that if you want improved cook stoves and biogas and those are very important interventions because very rightly pointed out we just don't have enough LPG mm -hmm. and that biomass is there. Mm -hmm. If it is not used for this then it is going to be burnt up in open air mm -hmm. and cause pollution anyway. So it has to be used but the main priority has to be to ensure that the cooking energy of the quality that LPG delivers mm. is delivered by these fuels. Okay. Technological that innovation has to happen right. in order to make that happen, okay. which we haven't done. I mean, we are just, uh, uh, we as in the researchers mm. as well as policy makers mm. have uh, always looked at this that we know what is good for rural people mm. and therefore they should be just grateful for whatever that we are giving to them. Mm. They don't understand and uh, we are totally uh, sort of um, neglecting their aspirations. Okay. India is not like Africa. Mm. The rural Indians know how people in urban areas live. Mm. They have seen, if not experienced, the quality of energy that LPG delivers. Mm -hmm. If that quality comes from a biomass based cook stove or a biogas plant, mm -hmm. then there will be uptake. I have three questions coming out of this. Yeah. So, LPG, I understand, is quite subsidy supported? At, at this point at of time. Yes. So, would you say that <coughs> our biogas technologies and our improved cook stove technologies require similar, similar subsidy intervention? Um, Actually, uh, I'm working currently with uh, uh, under this, uh, this is a project which Ashden India Collective is doing, okay. which is based on an idea which I had uh, floated in a few uh, meetings. Mm -hmm. GIZ is funding that. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to <coughs> develop a, um, uh, a single framework okay. in which different type of cooking energy systems can be compared on, on the same uh, criteria or same parameters. Mm -hmm. Like today for example we can very well define what we mean by quality of electricity being delivered that it has to be certain voltage, certain frequency and so on. Okay. What do we mean by quality of cooking energy? Nobody really understands that. It is not just emissions and efficiency. Mm -hmm. It also means that you should be able to make X number of rotis in uh, why minutes, okay. then only we, we people are going to accept it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are trying to define a matrix mm -hmm. of what are the characteristics of cook, cooking energy service mm -hmm. and with those characteristics mm -hmm. then it will be possible to compare LPG, biogas, improved cook stoves, solar cooking, mm -hmm. anything else that people may innovate. Mm -hmm for cooking, everything can be compared on these say 50 parameters or whatever that we may identify. Mm -hmm. And then we are proposing that the subsidy should be linked with how each system scores overall on this matrix. Okay. So any system irrespective of what technology it is using, mm -hmm. if it is delivering say 80% of the cooking energy service that is desired, mm -hmm. then it should get higher, a higher subsidy. So that's that's the kind of uh, logic that we are trying to work out. By we, is there a government organization, administrative um, representative also in this? Not yet, but uh, MNRE has sort of given a half nod to the project because otherwise GIZ cannot work. Okay. Um, 
but we i mean essentially it is also for the manufacturers okay. to understand what is it that people want from mm-hmm. a cooking energy service so uh, we are focusing on that aspect which is the very practical aspect but in the long run mm-hmm. we feel that this matrix can be used for devising these type of policies mm-hmm. which will then give a fair uh, share okay. in whatever subsidies decided for the cooking energy sector based to on various efficiency technologies or yes. like so efficiency. it's not not just efficiency it's okay. basically based on the cooking energy service delivered mm-hmm. at the end point okay okay taking you back to what you were uh, telling me about biogas technology uh, yeah. there's never how it ultimately the women's job to you yeah. know yeah. yeah. there were the other like social challenges let's call it that that you face um, while working with these well uh, firstly let me make it very clear that we ourselves like my institution or i myself we have never worked on dung based biogas systems at all okay uh, my father developed the concept of uh, food waste based biogas system okay. for urban households using our kitchen waste we can generate biogas okay. and in that connection we sort of did a comparison of what a dung based system is doing and what this is doing and there are a whole lot of um, efficiency improvements if you mm-hmm. don't use dung and use food waste or okay. any green material going into the biogas plant okay. um but even but, uh, uh, as so. far as dung based biogas systems is concerned there are for dung based systems not many social challenges because uh, in india culturally dung is considered to be holy sure. so no problems with handling dung and all that mm-hmm. the moment we start talking about human excreta based biogas plants then there are lot of cultural barriers yes. but not for dung based systems okay. but regarding the um, cook stoves moving away yeah, from traditional the, chulas did that um, throw up any yeah okay uh, in the case of cook stoves uh, we typically have found that uh, uh, the older women were opposed in general this basic opposition to change hmm. the younger women uh, wanted a better cooking energy system hmm. they were not exactly happy with what the improved stoves at that particular time were doing hmm. uh, but that was the only option for them to move at least a few steps up hmm. from the traditional stove okay and interestingly i mean in uh, my colleagues tell me that in the 80s when the national program on improved cook stoves started hmm. uh women always identified the <coughs> time saved from fuel collection mm-hmm. was uh, that they could utilize it for some work to be done or resting and all that towards the end around uh, late 90s 2000 younger women were more and more interested in improved stoves to save fuel collection time mm-hmm. so that in the afternoon they can watch television <laughs> so their priorities have also changed <laughs> that's probably a good thing yeah. i guess <laughs> so what do you see as the future for cooking fuel in rural india from your experience um well i feel that it is uh, not going to go anywhere if we separate if separately look at cooking for urban and cooking for rural mm-hmm. um what i am currently doing is there are these five or 10 different cooking energy technologies currently available mm-hmm. each one has its own uh, merits and demerits mm-hmm. these are for everyone whether urban rural rich poor doesn't matter uh, the idea is to uh, get each technology to such a level that it delivers to the maximum extent possible what people desire from a cooking energy system mm-hmm. and then just leave it uh, to people to decide what makes sense for them <coughs> so it will in that sense also it will help to have a single cooking energy policy rather than a cook stove policy and biogas policy and solar cooking policy and lpg policy mm-hmm. so finally i my i'm going back to that uh, question earlier uh, you had spoken about how researchers have this idea that you know we dictate to rural india mm-hmm. what they should be to is there even a slight change in that mindset are we regarding traditional knowledge or regarding rural india to know what uh well there are some people who are at least claiming that they are involving uh, local women in uh, design development or validation of whatever designs are being developed mm. uh but i don't really know because uh, <coughs> i keep on coming across 
this very serious discussions about um, how uh, uh, rural women should be using these cooking devices so that the impact on climate change or impact on, they don't care i mean it's not their problem they have neither created the problem they their daily life itself is such a big struggle that it is unfair for them to be doing something to solve these problems yeah. so um, i i feel that there's just this disconnect between what is happening at the ground level what people really want yeah. and what we sitting here in our fancy labs and uh, in <laughs> india habitat center in delhi think is good for people <laughs> it's a huge big disconnect and it's it's i mean i i have gone through that process mm -hmm. when we started our company we had this uh, whole uh, very uh, lofty ideal idea that we have such fantastic devices that everybody is bound to love them and accept them and shell out money for them mm -hmm. it just didn't happen mm -hmm. people didn't want what i was trying to sell them they wanted what i was using in my kitchen Mm. which is a very fair uh, expectation that's right so um, that is why uh, i stopped marketing in rural areas mm -hmm. and i said that uh, these are devices for cooking period whoever is interested can buy them and interestingly when we focused along these lines and stopped calling them devices for rural areas there was more interest from rural areas and when uh, the same product started appearing in urban households the demand from rural went up mm. so it's a very aspirational aspect uh, to these uh, technologies which we have so far neglected mm -hmm. understandably so i mean coming from no yeah. energy access yeah. to yeah 